ladies and gentlemen, I'm welcome to Green Street. As you can see, I'm a bit of an artist, not a very good one, so don't hang around for the drawing. Um, if you've got a few minutes, I'd like to speak to you for a bit. Um, and my first question is, what's the meaning of life? What's it all about? And how can I have the best life possible? So anyone got any suggestions? That's the title, see if you can guess what I'm getting at. Anyone, you sir? Uh, happiness. Happiness. Yeah, that's kind of it. That's, it's, that's kind of general gist. Everyone wants happiness, but what do you do to what do you do to get it? What's the aim? Maybe if you look at society, you think you see people. They say, you know, it's all about wealth. But then at the end of the day, you buy something, you get some wealth, you've got a house, and it never seems to satisfy. So maybe um, it's all about having a wife or things like that. But then there's so much divorce and that never seems to work out. Well, I'm going to give you a clue. If you've got a bowl of soup and you've given a fork or a spoon, what are you going to use to eat it with? It's kind of a silly illustration, but it proves the point. What are you going to use? Um, a spoon, yeah. You're going to, the main point of that is you're going to use what's designed for the job to do it properly. So that's the aim of life. We want to, to be the happiest, to have the best life we have. We have to be living how we're designed. And this, I'm going to write out the word of how we're designed up on the board. See so if you can read it. It's going up in red. The letters should appear in yellow. Anyone see it going up? Back there. Can you read that? Relationship. Thank you, relationship. That's why I just said the meaning how to have the best life possible. And you might think that's a bit strange, what I said about divorce earlier. But I'm going to have to clarify it. Um, well, in every relationship there's two people, um, and if we're all a bit selfish, this is going to be about who we think about first often. So I'm talking about, as I said, say there, you. But for every party, every relationship, it takes two people. So I'm going to write out the other person that this is all about. And it might scare a few people, they might see the word up, um, and they might run off. And this is the other person. Can you see that? So this relationship I'm talking about is between you, everyone walking down the street, and this other person, this person God. Or you might think, you know, God, if he's what he's meant to be, if he's if he's all powerful and if he's everywhere, then and I can have a relationship, what's the problem? Well actually there's a barrier that separates us from this relationship with God, from having this thing that means our life is the best possible life we could have. And I'm going to write up this word in between and it's going to say what this barrier is. Word there says wrong. This barrier between you and God is wrong. It's everything that you've done wrong in your life, um, everything you've thought, everything, everything you've said, and everything you've done. And you might think, you know, I'm not that bad a person. I've done more good than bad. But you know, it's not the good things that cause this barrier. It's not the good things that break it down. So all you need is one thing that's wrong to separate you from a perfect and a holy God. And many people realise that. And if you look in the world around, and you'll see people trying to, trying to break down this barrier, trying to get through and be good enough for God. And the first one of them, the first way people try is this word here. Um, and you might be surprised, because I'm going to say it doesn't work. You might be surprised by what it is. First way that people try and be good enough, try to get to God, is by religion, by going to church enough, by praying enough, by doing all these things. They somehow think they can, they can kind of butter God up, make Him happy with them, and kind of break through this barrier. 
And you know, there's so many people going to church, they're not happy. God, God wants you to have the best life, to be happy, to have this relationship. And there's so many people going to church, who are sitting there and are bored. And that's not what good God wants, because they're just people trying hard, trying hard to work, um, to be good enough for God. If you're a parent, I don't know, maybe you've got kids, and you want your kids to be happy, you don't want them to come to you and have to try really hard, try and be good enough, or you want them to be happy just because you love them and that's like God. Now this other way, um, that people, people try and be good enough for God. Quite similar, really. It's good work. You know, we think, you know, if I do enough good things, I'm going to kind of weigh out these scales, cancel out the bad things. But that's not going to work. Because if you're kind of trying to do a bargain, if you're trying to do a deal with someone, if you want an exchange, if you want a swap, you're going to have to do something that they can't do themselves. You're going to have to have something to exchange. And you know, the Bible says, even our best deeds, even our best things, like filthy rags. They're disgusting to God. So we have nothing but we can trade God. But so cancel out our sin, cancel out the one. We have nothing that we can give him. So good works don't work. So, so neither often work. There's no way that either of these can help you have a relationship with God. So if God made us this way, if God made us have a relationship with him, and if he's God and he knew that it was going to all go wrong, um, isn't that a bit unfair, do you think, that God would leave it that way? Well, I want to tell you, he didn't. He decided, you know, we've been trying to work and break through the barrier. And he said, no, I'm going to break through. And God said, he was going to break through and have a relationship with you. And this is what he did. He did it through this person here. And you probably know their name is Howard. He did it through this person person of Jesus and God sent this person Jesus and he came and he lived the perfect life. He was fully human, just like you, so he knows everything about you, he knows how you feel, he knows how you are. But he did there was one thing that separated, one thing different. There wasn't any wrong. And God sent him and he came and he died on one of these. He died on the cross. And by dying on the cross by that punishment he got, which he didn't deserve. He can cancel out, he can pay the price for all your wrong. And now you can have a relationship with God through Jesus. Well, you might think I'm a bit of a nutter saying, you know this God who came down, who was lived on, earth, lived on earth and then he died, how can I have a relationship with this dead guy? Well, that's not the end of the story. This God, this Jesus, who came and lived on a cross, um, died on a cross, came down, buried in a tomb and then three days later he rose up from the dead and he's alive again today. Um, it's not just some, some man, some good moral teaching you that you see lots of them about, they did rise from the dead. So if you want this relationship with God, it's not through religion or good works, but it's a free gift that God gives and because it's because he loves us it's free and it's so simple. The only things you have to do to accept it can be expressed as A, B and C. This first one, admit. You have to admit before God, you just have to say, you know God, I've done wrong, I've done wrong. And this sin that separates me from you. And then secondly, believe that God sent his one and only son, Jesus, who came and died on the cross buried and then rose on the third day. And the final one. Is to commit your life, not a popular word. But God committed himself when he sent Jesus to die on the cross for you, for your sin. And he asked that you do the same thing, not to earn, earn it back, but just to show him um, that you are committed, you are committed to following him. Um, and if, if anyone's heard that for the first time today, um, and, it, and it's really struck home. I've got this little leaflet here, it says, turn to God. And 
taking one of these won't, won't actually take these steps. It will just show God that you mean business. So I'd like to invite anyone for the first time to come take one of these.